This is my 1980 Citroen Diane. As you can see from these pictures, it's not the most normal looking Diane, and for that reason it was struggling to find a home. But I like cars that are different, and if it's going to be a camouflage military Diane, that'll do me. Let's take her for a run. Are we ready? Citroen 2 CV, but I guess all things are relative. Diane is actually a true sister to the 2 CV. The underpinnings are very similar indeed. Slightly more power, but the same sort of ladder chassis, the same weird horizontal springing. It, it is very much a spin off from the 2 CV platform. It was actually designed by Panard's designers. The Citroen had just taken over that company and the designers were twiddling their thumbs a bit. So they were tasked with building a better 2CV. And they did, it's more streamlined. There's much more interior space. The doors are hollow. So I've actually got some elbow room for a change. And there's a nice practical hatchback. Uh, Diane was launched in 1967. And I had quite a few engine changes fairly early on. Most of the ones you'll see in the UK use the later M28 602cc engine. Same as the 2CV with a slightly higher compression ratio, with blown mildly forced air induction and 33 brake horsepower compared to 29. Gearing's also a bit taller, so they're actually a bit more refined at motorway speeds, all things being relative. And the Diane was a huge success. Sister managed to sell 1.4 million of them before production ended in 1983. It may have been designed to be a better 2CV, but the original outlasted it in the end. This one is particularly intriguing because it was last on the road in 1995. Between then and a few years ago, it was used as a shooting hack on a farm. And it would take all the seats out by the drivers, and everyone would just stand up and off they go hunting. I'm not a hunting type, can you believe it? So, I, I like giving this car a fresh lease of life. So, getting this car home after it's 20 years off the highway was um, an interesting experience, as this little um, edited highlights package demonstrates. I'm just leaving Warminster in my new Citroen Diane, and as you can see, she's quite a beauty. She hasn't been on the road for quite a long time, about 20 years. I've just given her her first full tank in what must be a very long time. I even put in super and leading because I'm really nice. miles in, which is still running well, a bit lumpy on tick over and there's a touch of pinking at times as well so I'm having to be a bit careful with the frock. I'm currently driving through Bradford upon Avon which was the home of Dr Alex Moulton. He was the man responsible for the Mini's uh, rubber cone suspension and then hydrogas and hydroelastic. But he was also a huge Citroen fan. Looks like I may have spoken a bit too soon. Twice she's conked out on me now as we're still driving through the very, very busy, very beautiful town of Bradford-upon-Avon. 
Oh, now she goes again. Oh, no, I'm caught her. I'm caught her. Oh. I don't quite trust the tick over at the moment. Maybe there's a bit of muck in the car or something. Come on, traffic, keep moving, keep moving. Oh well, only another 130 miles to go. <laughs> 30 miles in and I may have made a mistake. I stopped for a quick breather and a drink. And now, She won't restart. Arse. Oh, that's a happy noise. Just a few minutes cooling down with a bonnet open. The coil has cooled down enough and I can get on my way. I shall just have to hope there's no more traffic on the way back. So I'm going by the M4, M5. That might be wishful thinking. Onwards we go. I'm not half a mile down the road. I'm in a bloody traffic car. Struggling to keep this little car from getting all upset and hot and bothered. Here we go, we're about to join the M4 motorway. We're in a bit late doing an indicated 17. Yeah, alright. Onwards to Wales. We've done almost 90 miles there. Well, certainly getting there when it comes to the miles. A good golly is this car fun. Incredibly, on that journey home, this car had bolts missing out of the inlet manifold. It must have been running hideously weak on one cylinder. Yeah, it still blasted along at motorway speed. Even worse, when I got it back and started taking the engine apart, there were bits of carrier bag all over the cylinders. It obviously sucked one in through the fan at some point, and it shredded all over the engine. The oil cooler was also absolutely caked in mud. Watch out, sheep. Yet somehow this little car still got me home. want to get into Citroen 2 series and Diane is a pretty good way of doing it. They're a bit more difficult to work on, bodywork parts or isn't quite so good but a Dutch of Club of Great Britain does make some repair panels which are essential. This car needs the lower windscreen panel section and uh, the club handily has one made. The club also does lots of little bits like replacement seals for the windows. And in terms of mechanical support, you can get pretty much everything. There isn't much that stops one of these from being able to go on the road. Corrosion aside. One major benefit of the Diane is that it's got a full hatchback. As well as that, this later one has a folding rear seat. Although this seat is absolutely in bits, it's falling apart. There's quite a lot of space, there's usually an infill panel. Um, I'm washing mine at the moment and it's at home drying. But that goes there, so you've got some undercover storage. Inside, it's almost luxurious compared to a 2CV. I've got, you know, something approaching a dashboard. The speedometer is hidden away right down here. Sometimes a bit difficult to spot, especially on early right-hand drive Dianes, where the wiper motor obstructed most of what you see. It's got the same umbrella-type handbrake and the same push-pull gearbox as a 2CV, just a slightly different angle because the spare wheel is now under the bonnet and it has the, the linkage has to operate within the spare wheel. Anyone who's at home under the bonnet of a 2CV will immediately feel at home here. It's the same horizontal flap twin but with forced induction. Notice we've got a hose here, the fan pushes air into the air filter and then into the carburetor. It's a very mild form of supercharging and I mean very mild. They say, let's off-road. Hmm. I still seem to, seem to have a problem with the hot coil on this car. That's rather bothers bothersome.
So the question is, has changing the coil made a difference? Let's see. Yes, I would say so. Let's try going for a drive again, shall we? Right, now we've got that coil changed. We can upset these um, 4x4 rotors by going green laning in a diamond once more. Who needs low range? To be fair, it does get a lot wetter that way. I would certainly be disinclined to take the Diana any further. Maybe if it had electronic ignition, because then it'd stand a fair chance of actually getting round. But with points, it's just too easy for a bit of damp to get in, and you end up conking out in the middle of nowhere. Which, as you can see in this video, I've done before. It's always nice to have someone around to do gate duty for you. Unfortunately, that person is me today. Of course, the other good thing about the Diane is that the roof rolls back. This is my first time enjoying some actual sunshine, and look at that view. And the car's not bad either. is a fantastic box ticker. Pretty good on fuel, it's very practical, it's lovely to drive, and it's got all the eccentricity of the 2CV, but a few less of the downside. Still enormous fun on these bendy, twisty roads, just that little bit more refined at speed. Really, I'm surprised it's been quite so long since I last owned them. About 15 years, I think, at the last count. Mark my words, the Citroen Diane is one of the best classic cars you can buy. See you next time.